I want to talk about the war on men, and I want to talk about how women use other men to carry out their attacks on men, and this makes complete sense to me. Because in order for a man to be a part of a world dominated by women, he must adopt the values of women and one of those values is the hatred of men. Of course, not all women are healthy if they hold the value of hating men. Women do not hate men, rather, they despise other women who have been brought up to believe they are entitled to things and who are not productive or healthy individuals. It's easy to fall into the psychological trap of blaming other people for your lack of success in life and your inability to get things done. After all, making the right decision can be challenging. Either you have to confront the reasons why you failed at something, at which point you are aware that you are facing your own weakness, or you have to make an excuse, at which point you really can't overcome it. You are aware of that vulnerability, and as a result, it is a trap. It is similar to quicksand, or a Chinese finger trap, in which the more you struggle to free yourself, the more secure the trap becomes. If, however, you are able to recognize how it is working, relax, and give in, then you will be able to escape the trap. This is similar to certain wrestling holds in which, if you are aware of where the pressure is being applied, you will also be aware of how to escape from the hold. However, if you are unsure and you exert effort in the wrong direction, you will only serve to further ensnare yourself in the predicament. You are aware that you are being attacked, and I hope that you are aware that it is not a personal attack, but rather that it is just the character and nature of somebody who is unable to really do a good job. So what is the trap for the man, because you are aware that you are being attacked? And who wants to make an excuse and find fault with people who can do a good job, which happens between men just as much as it does between women. That should make it clear. Okay is that men are forced to compete with one another for the affection and approval of women, which is unethical, and as a result, men are lulled into engaging in behavior that is unethical, unworthy, and unhealthy. That is actually destructive to their own nature and character, like a bird that rips off its own wings in order for women to accept the men. However, in order for women to accept the men, that is how the man has to behave, and that is the attitude he has to adopt towards other men, particularly the productive and capable men. After the men have been broken down and have accepted the female values as correct, something else happens to the weaker men. Which is a very weak way for a man to go because it means letting the woman be in charge, and as you probably already know, women can't really be in charge. You are aware of everything such as the fact that they simply are unable to make political decisions, but nonetheless, they always make the decision. That is the most practical course of action at this juncture, when the amount of anguish that one must endure is at its lowest. Therefore, they will always vote to avoid one unit of suffering, even if doing so will result in ten units of suffering in the future. Men, on the other hand, do not behave in this manner. This is the reason why women just can't lead because men will say things like let's take that one unit of suffering now because it's not so bad and thus avoid the 10 units of suffering down the road, while women will say they just can't. They just can't plan some of them, you know they can plan them individually, yes, but as a group with security concerns and emotional concerns, no, they can't plan them, is that right? It is a terrible idea that we want to put women in positions of authority and power and make important decisions. It would be absurd to suggest that women possess the same level of ability as men, given that the vast majority of men are unable to successfully complete this task. I'm sorry, but it requires a different frame of mind, therefore, the men in their company who are not leaders need to adopt the values that women have and the mindset that women have. You already know what happens next, they start behaving exactly like women, which means that instead of the man getting up and engaging in productive work, he begins to imitate the behavior of women. He stands up and begins to criticize other people, claiming that he is unable to perform his duties because other people are making it difficult for him to do so. When a man like that joins another group of men who are productive in their own right, he is completely disruptive to the dynamic of the group. If you have a group of men working on a construction project and they are all good workers, but then you bring in another man who claims to be a good worker when in reality he is not, then the project will be delayed. You should know that he is stupid and that he has a female mentality because he is going to come in there and start making excuses for his lack of productivity and then try to convince the other man that he is right. Oh, complaining, moaning, 
lying, slandering, and not being productive are perfectly acceptable behaviors for you and the only way you can get away with doing things like this. If you blame someone else, then the entire construction crew will go down the drain and you know this because you have this one man hanging out in the group, then you are responsible for this. It's a tough job, you know, and you wonder why the men don't really carry themselves like men. But what happens if half of the men you know already have this female mindset? Why they are not in shape and why they are not toned why they are not thin men are not supposed to be overweight they are not supposed to be obese and diabetic they are just not supposed to be overweight and diabetic. Even old men are not intended to resemble old women because even old men are not intended to resemble old women. I want you to acknowledge the fact that men are increasingly adopting the mentality of women. You are aware that competition is healthy because of this phenomenon. Because of this, if you're stuck in a rut and someone who is, um, competitive toward you and a little bit of a threat towards you comes along, you should try to shake things up. It will rev up your male metabolism, and hopefully there is nothing more frustrating than seeing a man who is unable to move on from his feelings. It's a boy because no matter what the circumstances are, as a man you should be able to put aside your emotions regarding it and get on with the job and do the work, but these men scream, they yell, and they accuse each other, and look, I know decent guys. It's a boy right because no matter what the circumstances are as a man you should be able to put aside your emotions regarding it and get on with the job and do the work they are just incapable of controlling their rage, their emotions, and their anger. They become so upset and so offended that they are incapable of producing high quality work. If you ask me honestly, it seems as though they are offended. Do they go out and help build up the borders? Do they suggest plans that would help strengthen the borders? Since you are aware that the country is not doing everything it can to defend its borders, you may be wondering if they do either of these things. You know what they do, they attack other men who are in fact building up the borders because they don't like the way that those other men are building up the borders, and this becomes this lifelong pattern right here. Therefore, you need to break out of that pattern, you need to recognize this tendency in other men, and this is the challenging part. You need to disassociate with those men, you need to recognize the true poison in their character, and avoid them, they will use it. So, you need to break out of that pattern, you need to recognize this tendency in other men, and this is the difficult part, you need to recognize this tendency in other men. They will try to connect with you over something that the two of them share in common, such as a common goal, but then they will unload their broken personality on you, which is a really difficult thing to deal with. This is the origin of MGTOW OK, when you look at the woman, you can see that she is broken emotionally and psychologically and that she lacks virtue. She doesn't have any integrity and all she's doing is manipulating the entire situation. She doesn't even have any self-awareness and because of this, she's going to try every dirty trick that she can think of and you should say this to yourself. She doesn't have any character. It's too bad about that because maybe it's an attractive woman, maybe it's someone who has a lot of potential. It's possible that there are ways in which the two of you could help each other, but you can't do so because one of you has fundamental flaws, and those flaws are going to be revealed. It may not come out today, and it may not come out tomorrow, but eventually, the person who can't control their emotions and is abusive to other people is going to turn on you. It may not come out today, and it may not come out tomorrow. It makes no difference if they are helping you today, if you continue to associate with them, they will be okay with betraying you tomorrow. That animosity and viciousness that they direct at other people, that unrestrained emotion that they direct at other people will eventually be directed at you, and it is being generated by a series of thoughts that are so corrupt and poisonous that if you hang around it, of course it's going to turn on you. If you hang around it, it will eventually be directed at you. The vast majority of people are located in the same spot, so this can be compared to a defect in a sword, right? It's possible that this sword has an excellent hilt, polish, appearance, and edge, but it has a crack close to the hilt, which means that if you use it, eventually the crack will cause the sword to break right there. It's a very important process, so the question is whether you want to own that sword despite the fact that it has that fundamental flaw, and you are aware of the risk that flaw poses, right? Because it could snap at an inopportune moment, causing it to strike either you or someone else you know and care about, the sword is in poor condition. 
The Japanese believed that some swords were evil because the characteristics of the swordsmith could be passed onto the sword. If the swordsmith had a poor character, the Japanese believed that this would be passed onto the sword. Because of this, the blade was thought to be bloodthirsty and dangerous, and as you probably already know, the sword is considered to be the man's soul. If the owner was unable to control his temper and emotions and was constantly getting into fights, then the blade was also thought to be dangerous. Therefore, when they discuss the sword, they are also discussing the nature of the man, this is the metaphor. Because of this, it may take some time in one's life before one comes across other people who struggle with such fundamental issues, however, these issues are fundamental in nature. They are essential to developing into a capable human being and have an aesthetic value. It all boils down to having a good understanding of oneself, as well as the willingness and capacity to confront one's own shortcomings, as well as the ability to triumph over those shortcomings after admitting to having them, as opposed to trying to conceal the origin of one's actions from oneself. If a person has these flaws and then allows those flaws to drive their behavior, then it does not matter what benefits that person may be able to provide to you in the present or over the course of the next year because their character will not change. These fundamental flaws, if they can't face them, can't be changed, they are destiny, and they will manifest. If they can't face them, they can't change them. If, however, you really don't have a choice about who you're associating with, for example, because of family obligations or other obligations, then my advice is to share your observations with the person in question while avoiding causing them emotional distress. Check to see if they are open to making changes, and if they are not, you need to distance yourself from them because you are aware that their weakness will eventually bring you down. Now, let's say you're a flawed person with a hundred different flaws and you want to try to pass those flaws off on someone else. Then I guess you're kind of meant for each other, right? But that's a terrible situation to be in, so these are just some things to think about as you move forward with your relationship.